I need a benchtop power supply. So let's make one. As you've probably seen on this channel, I do a lot of 12, 5, and 3 volt projects. And up until now, I've just been kind of hacking my way through it with different power supplies and wire splices. So I thought it'd be a great time to design my own benchtop power supply. Now you can buy benchtop power supplies pretty reasonable, and there's a lot of great projects out there for 3D printed versions that use ATX power supplies, but nothing that really fit what I wanted to do. So I thought I'd create one from scratch. And there's a few parts that I bought to make the whole install just a little bit easier. First up, we have this breakout board. What this allows you to do is take the ATX 24 pin plug and break it out in all the different voltages that it can do. 12, 5, and 3.3 .3 volt. And they're all fused. The only problem with this board is these are actually screw down terminals and not very good ones. So they're not compatible with banana plugs. So that's why I'm going to swap these out with some of these. It should be a direct swap out replacement. You can just bolt these in the same spot that the existing terminals are on. So let's get all these swapped out. We're just going to take the nut off the back of all these and replace them. And our new plugs are on. These should be much nicer to use. And I also grabbed a couple of sets of miscellaneous leads with banana plug ends on them just to make the whole thing easier to use. And for the printed parts, I have a couple of different iterations here on the table of designs that I made along the way. I do recommend that you use PETG for something like this because they're snap fit parts and the flex of the PETG works a lot better for that type of design. Now I'm not going to walk you through how I created it in Fusion, but I do want to give you some images to show you what we're working with here. So here's what the box generally looks like. The breakout board will go in this spot here and we can snake through that ATX plug through this hole. It plugs in the top. This front plate section can actually be screwed down to the front of the box so it's easier to print. It all comes apart. The front of the box is actually keyed to the back top part of the box again so it's easier to print. And the power supply sets in here. And then to kind of lock it down, the whole thing sets in a tray. This bottom tray piece here. And then in the back I've mashed up all the screw holes so we can kind of line those up and get it snug down. I did add some screw holes in the front of the box just in case it's not quite solid enough. I could tap some holes and put some screws in there. But I think it'll be okay even if we have to use just a little bit of glue here on the front. And then in the front of the case over that breakout board, here's what the cover is going to look like. I am going to add some voltage badging across the front. And this will have a switch that goes to the micro switch that's on the breakout board. There's my switch right there. So basically I was focused on parts that were pretty easy to print. So now we're going to perform a little surgery on our ATX power supply. And the reason why I went with an ATX supply is because I figure a lot of makers probably have these setting around from old computers. I know I have a couple already, so it's pretty much free for me to use. Now these power supplies have a lot of connections for drives and fans and motherboards, things that I don't need. I just want that 24 pin ATX plug. That should get all the voltages that we want to use. So I'm going to get in there and look around and try to remove some of those leads as safe as possible. So let's open it up and see what we got. So let's see what we got in here besides a whole lot of dust. So we'll take some of these zip ties off. Do be careful if you're working inside any power supply. Make sure you know what you're doing before you open one of these up. Capacitors can hold voltage for a long time even after they're powered off. So all we're really interested in is this ATX plug. This is what goes into our breakout board. So this wire loom here is the one I want to keep. All the rest of these can go. So I think our best bet is just to flip it over and remove the solder joints and pull the wires out one at a time. It might be somewhat tedious, but it's probably going to be a lot cleaner install that way. And it's probably a good thing that that was time-lapsed. Not my finest work, but I think the patient survived. I was able to get a lot of them out pretty cleanly. A lot of the ground wires were connected to the same terminal, so I just snipped them off as close as I could. There was also a 5-volt wire that was the same way here in the back, so I clipped it right at the board. It shouldn't give us any issues. And there's a look at the inside where I cleaned up those wires. Let's go ahead and throw a new zip tie back on here so it doesn't move around. And we can go ahead and throw a cover back on and we should be good. And your front and the top piece that's going to hang over the back should just fit together like this. It's a really tight fit, 
but they do fit a lot better if both pieces are PETG because there's a lot more give. Now we'll just snap our upgraded breakout board into this housing that goes on the front of the case, like so. Then I'm going to use some M3 by 18 millimeter screws to attach this whole assembly onto the front of my case. There's some spots in the back for some M3 nuts back here. We're looking better. Now I'm just going to slide the power supply in. We'll feed the ATX plug through. And the case should sit on top of the power supply, just like so. I use some M3 by 12 millimeter screws to attach it onto the back of the power supply. That should keep it from moving around. And just for extra stability, I printed out this tray, and the whole thing will set in this tray. That kind of keeps the front and the back together. And then again, some M3 by 12 millimeter screws on the bottom here to attach the bottom of the tray. I did miss landing that hole in Fusion. I thought it was correct, but I'll have to go back and fix that. It wouldn't be a project without at least messing one thing up. And then on the front, now that it's together, we can just kind of poke the excess wires down inside the box. And we can plug in our breakout panel. There we go. Now we can put our cover on. We can set our switch extender over our micro switch right there. Slide my finished cover design on. Snaps on nice and tight, just like that. And our switch is working. I think we're looking pretty good. Outside of the PLA being a little warped because of the size of the piece, it turned out all right. Let's plug some power in, make sure no smoke comes out. Let's turn it on. I can see the LED has come on through the peephole there. I want to make something clear for that to project it out a little bit. I still have to investigate that some. Let's check it with the meter. We've got negative 12 volts on the first set, 12 volts on the second set, close to five volts where it should be, and 3.3 on the end. And there it is. Now I have a benchtop power supply that I can use on my projects going forward, and it's going to be a lot more convenient to use. Now this power supply isn't going to work in every situation. You can't adjust voltage or amperage on the fly, but for the odds and ends that I do, like Arduino and ramp setups, it's going to be great. I hope you liked this project. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.